to the Heroes of the Storm North American Regional Championship. We just watched our defending world champions, Cloud9, take on Team Nam. They managed to take a quick 2-0 and move on in that winner's bracket. They'll move on now, and we will get to see them compete more and more. We only have one match left for tonight. It's been a long day, a great day. Almost as long as I've been awake, I've been doing Heroes, and that is a great day. Let's check out our bracket and see what we have in store for the rest of the night and moving into tomorrow. Now remember, Team Blaze did advance between Cognitive and Team Blaze. Cloud9 played Team Nom, and Cloud9 did move on. We will see that winner bracket match tomorrow, but tonight we get to see Cognitive and Team Nom battle it out in the lower bracket. That means this is an elimination match. So I'm seeing some very, very serious faces on these teams. This is the time where you need to send them your energy. So if you want to check out social media, See what everyone's up to, look for the hashtag HGC, and if you're going to comment, if you're gonna send any energy their way, use the hashtag HGC and also the hashtag for the team that you're rooting for so we can see that vote. Now it's time to introduce your teams. If you're rooting for them, send their en your energy right now. It's Team Cognitive. Cognitive with a very surprising upset there in match number one for this group, Gillyweed. And oh, yeah. they are looking for blood. They were not happy. We talked to them backstage. They were not happy at all with their matchup versus Blaze. Yeah, you talked to them, and they said that there was a little bit of everything going on with them. Yes. Uh, some nerves coming into play for them, for sure. And uh, some of those losses being reflected right here, you know, they made it through a long way for yes. the qualifiers. The second qualifier is so strong in being able to qualify. I saw Cognitive take that first step very carefully. It's a doozy, so I'm advising the next team to do so as well. It's Team Nom. It seems like a lot of teams may lose games in the draft, but last set, I think Nom lost the game when they entered the stage, but this time, <laughs> they executed their entrance much better. Kachi watched it, he made it. Good job, I know that he is ready for the draft with that. Uh, next to him, Dayun. Uh, he and Wrath playing on the University of Illinois, yeah. Urbana-Champaign, uh, uh, here's the dorm team last year, which placed fourth, and here's some of their stats. A lot of Leoric Murky, an interesting uh, most played hero there, but they like some interesting picks, Oya. The IRL walking game was strong, so we can check that off the list. Now it's time to go into the virtual world. Casters, will you take us into the draft, please? Thank you, Anna, you glorious uh, pixie dust, fairy dragon. It's been, a, it's been a great day full of lots of games, Zoya, and we have just one set left. Couldn't be more excited here. I mean, uh, I don't think many people expected Cognitive to fall to Blaze, especially since without without Jason here, you know, he, he wasn't able to. They had to get a sub, uh, but Blaze looked very Blaze-esque in those games. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Cognitive, you know, they're definitely feeling much, you know, they, they take their losses well. They look at it what they did wrong, and they, kn they feel much more confident. But game number one today, it's going to be on Towers of Doom yet again. Yeah, we're going to have Towers of Doom, and once again, it's going to be Nam's choice of battleground. Um, so they will have the second pick spot, but we'll have uh, we'll be on some place where they feel more comfortable. And it didn't really work out for them that battleground pick before versus Cloud Nine, but maybe it's something that they could uh, change things up and maybe be able to take a game off of Cognitive. You know, it's it's going to be tough. Uh, Cognitive, I mean, they were one of the first teams spamming this map when it first came out. They were scrimming it so hard, and they're honestly, I feel the first team that really got a real understanding of this map. Um, um, so I'm really excited to see them play on this one. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it was actually uh, Murloc Geniuses back when they had when they were still together. They had a couple of members that had a really great game at Heroes Rising yes. versus Tempo Storm um, on Towers of Doom. So they have an understanding of this battleground. And if it's something where it's a, you're trying to pick it just to throw your opponent's team off, that's come and passed now. This, game, this ma battleground has been around long enough yes. that teams have finally been able to adapt strategies and figure that out, even though that does take a lot longer than when, say, just a new hero comes out. Yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely a lot you have to learn. You can't just think about the draft. You think about the map specifically as well. But here we go. The draft has begun. Looks like first pick, first ban. Going to be on the side of Cognitive. So the map choice, uh, both times we've seen it versus Cloud9 and versus Cognitive, Towers of Doom has been picked by Team Nom. Cigar going to be the ban there for Cognitive and a quick follow-up of Zeratul for Nam. Uh, understanding that Glaurung uh, is 
known for his Zeratul play, so wanting to take that away, uh, it can be very difficult to deal with when you've got such a capable Zeratul player, and especially with Void Prisons around those altars. I think, uh, you know, Glaurong's going to be a little bit upset about the Zeratul ban, but I think they're going to be 100% okay with a first pick on Rhaegar. Uh, guaranteeing themselves that healer right now is so good. I know Icon is going to be very, very happy about that. Team Nom with their next two picks. I mean, we've seen their kind of unconventional drafts or different play styles or different pick orders. I mean, I think game one or game two, actually, they picked Brightwing in their first rotation, you know. A little bit of a, of a different style there. But it will be Ling Ming out from Nam right out the gates. We'll see what they want to follow it up with. Uh, you know, um, you know, maybe a warrior, even more damage. We still have so many great uh, heroes in the game. Maybe denying Thrall from uh, um, from Glaurong would be a good pickup here. Yeah, you know, they like... Um, with Towers of Doom, you want to have a lot of good poke for trying to deal with uh, stopping them from being able to channel. And it looks like it is going to be uh, Greymane here. Now, Nam really likes to play Greymane. Um, they brought him out in the last series, too. It didn't quite go their way, but they were up against Cloud9. And that is going to be a, a nice comfort pick for them uh, moving into the next stage of the draft. Greymane here, picked up from Team Nam. Um, one of Glaur I think Glaurong says this is his second best character when he plays it right. Greymane's very technical, yeah, a lot of different what, what you know intric intricacies uh, with his play style, of how to execute it, when to go and when not to. Um, so uh, uh, Glaurong really likes that hero. Uh, it's right behind Zeratul. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be denied from him. They're going to go ahead and get that Thrall and Jaina. Really good power picks here. I'm curious if it will be Faye on Jaina, and if it is. You know, how likely is we seeing the Ring of Frost? Frost. Yep. <laughs> Probably pretty likely. Probably pretty way. likely. <laughs> Cho'Gall going to be the ban here. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, the the Cho'Gall has just been terrifying to deal with for a lot of these yes. teams. And I understand not even wanting to just give it, and especially with Rhaegar being picked up there by Cog. Vikings ban on this map. I mean, we've seen the power of it. Tempo Storm beating, I believe, Cloud9 at Heroes Rising with Vikings on this map. Very, very difficult to deal with, and we've seen both teams ban it out on this map just to not have to deal with it. Team Nam with their next two picks. They still need a warrior and a support. They might not need to pick their support here as Rhaegar is on the, on the table. Unless you're planning to potentially run like a Taronda, that's the only option where uh, you know they would need to pick their support now, unless they're wanting to hide stuff. So they're playing quite a bit of Karazim in the qualifiers. But we've seen Brightwing from them too. Um, also some Malfurion play from them, but Malfurion hasn't really been doing too well this yes. tournament. Although there was ga one game. One game. One game where he was able to get it. Looks like Tyrande and Murden once again yeah. going uh, for that very stun lock composition. And then from there, they're going to have a lot of damage to follow up with that. You know, Deadly Ice was making a name for himself on that gray main in the qualifiers. The, the yeah. prize prowess uh, on that hero. Well, we do see the Toronto was picked up. Uh, you know, the only support that really needed to be grabbed there, if that's what they're wanting to do. Well, I'm curious if it will be solo support or, uh, you know, the duo support with the Toronto. Last two picks here for Cognitive. They need a warrior. Still a lot on the table. Both ETC and Joanna are still up, as well as Stitches. I know Caterpillar has a fantastic Stitches. Mm -hmm. Such as an ETC seem to be the big picks for them too. Um, I know they were playing a whole lot of Stitches in the qualifiers as well. and. Um, could see them trying to get that too if they can get some hooks, um, especially uh, from the altars, you know, try to delay while they've got someone else on the other altar when it's a double spawn, pick that one up and then have them rotate in, um, playing the mind games there. It looks like Tassadar will be the choice here, and who will that warrior be, Zoya? Stitches, ETC still on the table, Joanna as well, to see what they want to lock in, thinking very, very hard about it. For this map, uh, I mean, Joanna's great for stalling out the points. I mean, ETC is always good just for the disruption he causes, and then it will be ETC. Last pick for Team Nom coming up. They need either another damage or another support for supports. You still have Morales on the table, Uther as well. Divine Shield has been pretty clutch today. Now, I want to put this out there. I don't think it's going to happen, but I do want to point that Team Nom was the team who drafted Gazlo versus no. Team Neventic in Qualifier 1. It didn't work. But it was there. It was there. That is true. <laughs> I feel like they have to go a true support here. If you look at the CC on the end of Cognitive, you got the roots from Thrall, the stuns from ETC, and the Sundering. Okay, they're going to go after it. <laughs> I was going to say they could really use a cleanse here, but um, you know, they're going to opt for otherwise. So, uh, Abathur. Okay, really interesting. Um, I'm curious as to who the clone. Oh, no, I'm not. Li Ming. Of course, the clones will be on Li Ming. <laughs> so much damage coming out from there. Maybe not a double Greymane. You don't think that they could just have like two Worgens just 
right in the faces of uh, cognitive. No, double aiming for sure. <laughs> That's so much damage, so much burst. There's a reason why you clone Jane all the time. It's because those mages have so much burst. Mm -hmm. It's based off. You have to look at it based off the base kit. Gray Man gets powerful off of his talents. You know, his talents are what make him more and more ferocious very throughout the true. game. Whereas Li Ming, level one, she's a monster. You know, that core kit is very, very powerful. Yeah, she is, and um, they have the potential to have a lot of siege if they were to go that too. So you know, sometimes you'll see um, the app with their clones. Once they get done with the team fight, they might just have a little bit of health left, um, waiting out that duration. So might be able to move in and throw down a bunch of abilities, take out a tower from that almost. Well, here we go, guys. Here are our, our players and who they are playing. It's going to be Wraith on Lee Ming. Kachi going to be playing the Muradin. Zugrug, been around for a while, going to be on that Abathur. I don't think we're anyone surprised on the picks here for uh, for Cognitive, who's playing what. Probably going to be Ring of Frost or Ring of Fell, depending on you know how well Faye uses it. Well, we will see as game number one is ready between Team Nom and Cognitive Gaming. All right, guys, get excited because this is an elimination match. One of these teams is going home and one of them is moving on. On the left-hand side of the map in the blue trunks, it's going to be Cognitive Gaming, Glaurong on Thrall, Iacona playing Rhaegar, Faye playing Jaina, Caterpillar playing ETC, and rounding out the team is going to be Koth and Luck playing Tassadar. And in the red, we have Team Nom with Wrath playing Li Ming and disappearing from this. Dayun playing Tyrande, Zugrug on that Abathur, Kachi playing Muradin, and finally, we will have Deadly Ice, of course, playing that Grey Mane. Of course, he did look fantastic in the qualifiers. Take a look at level one talents. It's going to be Thrall rocking out that, is that block, I believe? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be wow. seeing a mind build coming out from Abathur. And yeah, that's a pretty one-sided vote. Apparently people weren't too impressed with how Nom played game number one. But guys, you have to keep in mind, there are some nerves. They even stripped going onto the stage. But this time, they're ready. They've experienced the first Blizzard land stage. And now they're ready, out. They're ready to take blood from Cognitive. Plus, they were up against Cloud9. Yes. Cloud9, world the champion. world champions of Heroes of the Storm in 2015. So guys, if you're a Nom fan, make sure that you're voting. Use that hashtag HGC and the hashtag of the team you believe is going to win this series. Well, let's take a look here at the lanes as it will be Miranda roaming top looking for a gank onto Glaurong to see if they can do that. Miranda uh, has not revealed herself quite yet, playing pretty far back. In the mid lane, it's going to be Tassadar and Jaina going up against Lee Ming and Avatar. It looks like they're rotating up potentially to catch Taronda in the rotation. And in that bottom lane, it'll be Rhaegar going up against the Grey Main. I think those, those are technically the Wolf Boys, right? Yeah. Yeah, wolf boys down <laughs> in the bottom, duking it out with each other. Hachi getting hit by a blizzard. Not going to take too much damage from that, but I like there's a couple of interesting talent choices I wanted to point out here from Team Now. We've got Viciousness from Greymane. Um, a lot of times, if we see the inner beast, it's the wolf heart there, which uh, allows you to reduce the cooldown of that inner beast while it's active with basic attacks. But this time, it's going to be Viciousness, which basically um, increases the duration of inner beast from three to four seconds. And then ability damage is going to refresh it as well. So it's a lot easier to keep that refreshed, especially when yeah. you look at the Gilnean cocktail. Absolutely. And this is a talent that we see often on um, Battlefield of Eternity, where you're constantly sieging down those immortals. Yeah. And it's, it's really cool to see it on a map like Infernal Shrine, or excuse me, uh, Towers, Towers of, of Doom. Doom. Uh, <laughs> but we'll see uh, if it does work out here. We do have our first temp our altar spawning. They're going to be in the top left and the top right, a double shrine spawning here. Keep in mind that those are random. So, uh, you know, you have to be flexible with your lanes. You have to be able to rotate very quickly. And here, Cognitive securing level four just slightly faster. Will they go for a contest or is it going to be a trade? The owl comes out to delay Kachi versus Caterpillar uh, here in the middle, trying to just duke it out. But it will just be a one, uh, you know, an altar tra exchange here. Yep, Cotham going to pick it up as the shots fire from both of the sides. Bell Towers in 36 versus 36 on those cores as uh, Nom now going to pick up their level four as well. But Cognitive seems to be doing a better job of this early game so because they're starting to pull ahead in experience. Still going full mind build. We're going to be seeing, uh, you know, not this, you know, when you don't normally see the Owl Talent level one on Toronto, sometimes the builds change up, but uh, going to be going for uh, the Pierce at level four. So, yeah. no, no, it's it's pretty good on this map uh, when you're trying to stall those altars, especially when you get to the later game, you get the triple altar spawning. Right. Yeah, uh, it seems like this in Cursed Hollow, right? Where you want to have that Pierce. That way, nobody yeah. can just block the Owls. Um, if you lose a lot of value if you don't get to have that, where she can just continue on uh, with that, even without the Empower. But it will be really nice to 
have the Hunter's Mark up more often yes. so that they can uh, really just try to burst someone down as quick as possible. Even even someone as like the Warrior, like ETC, because of the fact that they have a Lee Ming and a Grey Mane. Yeah, so we do see that uh, nice uh, job capping the camps here in the top lane from uh, Nam. They've already got the front wall of Cognitive down, and they're completely even right now. We're not seeing the normal aggression we see out of Cognitive. They're going for a more sustained, long, uh, longer game. And that usually uh, tends to be the case with Tassadar. He's not a super early game hero. At point contention, he's great because he's got the shield, he's got the stall, and he's really hard to kill. But uh, the, the point contention is so uh, infrequent on this map that you have a lot of uh, downtime, and you can't really force fights with this comp. Yeah, and they're realizing that too, it, even with the Feral Heart pickup too from Rhaegar, instead of Stormcaller that we often see with that shield build, he will have the increased health and mana regeneration when in Ghost Wolf form because of that. Now we have level 7 coming out for Cognitive Team Nom, not too far behind, and we're going to have another altar phase in just a few seconds, and it will be a solo altar there in the mid. Well, we'll see here who's the first to contest it. Last time they were willing to go for a trade. Both teams do have level seven. Is Cognitive willing to brawl at this tier? I mean, their, their composition gets so much more powerful when they get their heroics, but they do have a lot of damage between Thrall and Jaina, so they can contest this. Glaurung just sitting in the top. Oh, he's looking for Zugrug. He is going to go for it there. The shrine is being contested. He's waiting so patiently, waiting for that Aberthur hat to go on someone, and there it is. Is Glaurung going to go for it? We'll see here. They are contesting bottom. I'll keep my eyes on the top. Ah, there he goes in. Yep, Glaurung's looking for the root, does not end up getting it. Fight in the bottom, and the shrine is still going on here. Jaina going for a flight, uh, trying to get onto a Dayun here, but uh, no damage just quite yet. Glaurung is rotating down here. Wraith goes out for the, uh, the big damage there. Dayun does end up missing his stun. Nice power slide going down on the Kachi. He's really overextended here. Can he get out? No, and right on top of that blizzard, he is going to go down. Nice first blood going over to Cognitive. It was good blizzard placement on top of that. The cleanse was great, too, to help Cattle make sure to avoid that Lunar Flare, but now he's going after ETC throwing, uh, or throw, sorry, after Tyrande, uh, and will get her, but loses ETC at the same time, so a one for one there, um, except, you know, with the earlier pickup too, so actually it's a two for one. Two for one, one of the better exchanges here for Cognitive that they could have gotten. That was really well done uh, to pick up that kill on Tyrande there. Gonna go ahead and start some camps here. Uh, Iacona and Glaur, I'm gonna take uh, this uh, siege camp down here, and uh, we'll have to keep an eye on uh, what they can do with these pushes here. Now, the front wall's already down uh, bottom lane for Nam, and Cognitive with a full level lead here with this siege camp with the rotations. They're gonna hit 10 very quickly here, and we'll see if they can force a fight. I mean, once Thrall gets level 10, that's when the game is really starting to go the way Cognitive likes to play. Once you have that Sundering, you can be in the face of your your opponent and constantly looking for picks. Man, once you get that that vile nest, that's super slow, it makes me angrier to hit one of those. It makes me angrier than trying to drive in LA traffic. So I, like just seriously, yeah, you hit one and you're just insta tilt yeah. because it's 50% slow for four seconds. Like, come on. Yeah, it's crazy how fast you get tilted from those average mines. I mean, I'm never tilted <laughs> and those tilt me <laughs> instantly never. too. Never get tilted. Imagine that. <laughs> Level 10 here for Cognitive. No surprise with these heroics. Uh, it will be water elemental this game, not really. Having the setup that uh, Faye wants for the Ring of Frost, you can use both Sundering and uh, ETC, but you usually see Faye go um, the Ring of Frost when Koth and Luck is playing the Zagara. They're one of the longest standing duos here in Heroes of the Storm. They've been playing together for a very long time, and Koth and Luck has great mods and Faye just knows how to land the Ring of Frost outside of it. Icona was taking a while to pick up Ancestral Healing. Yeah, I was. was like, don't you be He's cheeky. He's been doing that a lot today. Don't you be cheeky, but it is going to be Ancestral Healing. Team Nom picking up Avatar, go for the throw, uh, Ultimate Evolution, Disintegrate, of course, and then Shadow Stock to help out with those heals, help the team get into position or maybe get away if needed. And another altar about to spawn down in the bottom lane. Cognitive is ahead slightly in this core health, but because it's only a few shots every altar, it's still anyone's game. Disintegrate used Ooh. to interrupt Faye there, but Ray taking a lot of damage. Glauron goes for the Sundering, and Lee Mingam goes down almost immediately. Abathur Clone has been used on Zugrug. He's uh, doing as much damage to Glowering as he can, but really not doing anything. Great uh, mosh pit there. Good ancestral follow-up as well. Kachi's going to go down. Oh, why? Did they going to let him live? Wow. Chain Lightning can be cast on that fort. Maybe no, not going to be able to secure that. Glowering going back onto Deadly Ice. He's trying to get out of here. Glowering's very oom, though. Icona getting low. They do end up getting that altar in the bottom. Jaina did go back and cap it. Feel like if there's a little bit better focus fire on the end of Cognitive, they could uh, secure themselves two more kills. Well, they are still going to be able to push in immediately onto this bottom bell tower and pick it up. Iacona soloing the goblin or the pumpkin sappers there uh, too. So they, uh, it's pot uh, potential that they could try to escort it. <laughs> he might need a little bit of help here. Somebody help this dog out. He needs a little bit of backup <laughs> here. Uh, what they're trying to do is potentially, uh, okay, they're going to go back. I thought they're going to go for a big push there uh, mm -hmm. in the bottom to try and get those extra core shots uh, right. from the minions, but they do uh, opt otherwise. 
Laurent making his desperate push up the top lane. That is a lot of minions. There's a lot of experience that he doesn't want to miss out on. And he only missed one minion. So this is a big experience boost here for Cognitive. At the same time, we do see that those siege minions are being dealt with here in the bottom by Nam, And they're going to try and reclaim this fort. Yeah, that big minion push has netted Cognitive, their level 13 talents. So far, still thinking about what we're going to have uh, there. It will be improved ice block for Jaina, so not yeah. going for uh, the more aggressive Icy Vein style. Still respecting the damage that can come out from Nam. You know, we, we talked about it. Lee Ming and Greymane already add the Hunter's Mark to that, add Tyrande, uh Lunar Flare to that too. And um, you still have to respect the amount of damage that they can do in an instant. Well, we'll have to see what Rhaegar and Thrall are both wanting to get. And it looks like it's pretty standard stuff here. Rhaegar, I count him, man. He's just been slow on his talents all day. <laughs> it's been a long day for everyone. And I'll uh, we'll have to see what he wants to lock in. Level 13 almost here for Nam. They're about half a level to go. But it's a double altar spawning. And I don't know if they can contest this. This is going to be real uh, hard for them to do. It just depends on how greedy Cognitive gets with their split up between the two shrines. It makes sense that he just really wants to make sure that, you know, he's he's picking the right things. Their life is on the line here. This is the elimination match. And I think that it's Cognitive never believed that they would be here, especially upon hearing that Blaze had us up, but yeah. DXM played very well. Um, they were able to take those two games, and now Koth or, or, all of Cognitive finds themselves somewhere where they're not, so I understand the caution that we see coming out from them here in the series. It looked like both of those altars went over to Cognitive, correct? Or did I miss one of them? I don't... I think they both went to Cog. Mm -hmm. um, We'll have to see here uh, what Cognitive wants to do to push their lead even th further. Core health right now, 32 to 24 in favor of Cog, and they're about to get this top altar up here. Shellstock has been used, but that is a very dead Abathur. Later, Boro, you are, of course, finished. So Grug out for the next 30 seconds, has been pushing that top lane hard, but with this Glaurung, going to start moving in, uh, trying to take down some more Bell Towers. Wrath going to push him away with a laser beam of death. And now Cognitive just trying to continue the lead that they have, you know, what, whatever they can get, if they can keep uh, getting uh, Nam back, pushing them back and back, just trying to help uh, save their bell towers, um, playing defensive, then they're not out getting the full soak that they need to get back into this game. Level 16 almost here for Cognitive Team Nam, still so far behind. Two level lead in favor of Cog. They need to find a way to force themselves back in this game. I love the aggression coming out from Caterpillar and Glauron, just looking for a pick, even just as a duo. It's so late in the game that normally you want to be traveling as five, but they're really showing their aggression here, not afraid to dive in two versus two and try and get a pick. Well, you know, they can be so aggressive. They know they're ahead. They know they're about to get 16, but they also have really good sustain between the Tassadar and the Rhaegar. So they can be more aggressive because they know they're covered with all of the shields with the Kala's Embrace shield and then the heals that are coming out. Even more heals too with Tidal Waves pickup, but Nam nice realized they wanted to get into a fight, but now find themselves down level 16. Kachi has to use Avatar to try to get in here uh, from the back disintegrate, trying to melt down Glaurung, but still hasn't been able to do so just yet. Deadly Eyes coming in, but a great shield from Tastar is going to ensure that Glaurung stays alive, and they're just going to completely walk away from this unscathed. Really sloppy fight from Cognitive. I mean, they tried to blow up a merge, and they, I mean, almost killed him. Then he got the av uh, Avatar up. The Toronto heal started kicking in. Uh, you know, that's one of the problems with focus firing a warrior down. At the same time, Great Main goes down. Cognitive's able to re-engage at the top, and they do end up taking him down. 30 seconds until he's back, so this fort's going to go over to Cog. Uh, you know, it, you can't, even when you got this lead, you're up two levels, you have to be mindful of who you're killing. Murden is one of the hardest heroes to kill in the game. So Iacona was waiting to try to pick up. Well, that's all three forts. Yeah, he was trying. He was waiting to try to pick this up. Kachi is here trying to disrupt him. The rest of the team was up top. Iacona now. Uh, well, Kachi has to leave. He knows the rest of the team is coming. They're using Toronto trying to delay this. Uh, this is going to be sh so many shots going down, and they even got some extra ones because they were holding oh, all Kachi. of the all the bell towers. Uh, Dwarf Toss does not save Muradin, and another pickup by Cognitive. Dayun's going to go down as well. We are seeing that it's going to be the uh, root at level 16 from uh, Earthgrass. What's it called? Earthgrass Totem? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a, I believe, 90% slow. Yeah. Oh, it's very it's, similar. It's, it's, it's basically the same thing as Pulverize, but on the Totem for Rhaegar. We saw how um, powerful that slow was there. Yep. Now, the uh, uh, Nam at this point, they're just playing completely behind. They're, they're trying to play catch up constantly, but anytime they catch up somewhere, they pick up a bell tower, then uh, Cognitive are somewhere else, pushing some other lane, constantly keeping Nam on the back foot, and that's pulling them further ahead, that's making sure that they have extra shots from the altar, and that's exactly what they need to be doing to try to close out this game one. Well, 
we will see here what Cognitive plans to do to try and close it a bit quicker. I mean, the shots are already going at the core right now. Uh, they did get that uh, altar spawn, and then now it's going to be constant shots until they can get to a four. Cognitive looking to end this game early. The core's down to 13 HP. Nom needs to get on this fourth. They're focusing it down. You saw Zugrak even using the Avatar code to help get this down. And that's going to stop the shots there. So they are at 11 right now. Nice stun going on to Cattle to interrupt the mosh pit there. It's a two-minute cooldown now. Really good job from uh, him to keep his teammates alive. Great stun from Dayun. They have pushed them back once again, but this is the second time that they've lost all of their bell towers. Cognitive is looking so commanding in this game to be able to get those extra shots from the La Raven Lord onto the Gravekeeper's uh, uh, core. And from that, it's 32 to 11 for the core. Even if Nam can win a really decisive team fight, the best they can do is hope to get some altars back. But because you can't just push in and yeah. take out the, the keep and the core yourself, uh, it's a long road ahead of them, even longer than a, a normal battle. Ground. This is so hard for Nom here. I mean, by the time they rotate down to a different fort to take it out, like we see mid, we have Cognitive pushing in top. And while they're just on this cleanup from fort to fort to fort, they're not able to get on the map and capture altars as well. This is a, such a tough position from Nom to force their way back into the fight. They're not too far behind on experience, a level and a half down, so they're starting to even that up. But how are they supposed to get out on the map and contest Cognitive whenever they just have to, if they lose their force, they're going to start taking damage on core. Yeah, I mean, they, ha they have to get out now because Cognitive are almost level 20, and then they have a point where they can't get into a fight. So they need to get in a fight. They're going to use the Sentinel to stop Cattle from channeling this until they can move into position, maybe try to cut off some of the members here. Shadow Stock goes down. They're going to start to move in. Disintegrate stops Cattle once again into a Lunar Flare. Kachi coming in. There is the Sundering as well. And Fe wow, that flank. Uh, yeah, with the amazing flank. Water Elemental chasing Wrath down, trying desperately to get it off of her so that they wow, can Kong. keep Leaming alive. Cog getting a little bit too greedy with their positioning here. They're so split, and they've let so many kills they just barely get away, as well as almost getting low themselves. Zugrug just about to lose that Abathur clone, not able to get Cattle Beer, but uh, they're starting to underestimate their opponents here. Glauron getting hit with the essential. No, it does not end up actually connecting. Nice kill from Nom, and they're trying to bring this back here. Will Cattle go down as well? They're trying to burst them, but yes, they do end up getting them. Great kills coming out from Nom. Critical mass, so critical in being able to pick up those two takedowns, as now uh, Team Nom finally have more breathing room. They're almost caught back up in experience, wow. Soya. They're finally going to get an altar after what was such a long time without it. They are stealing every single advantage they possibly can while they know that Cognitive have people down. They're picking up pump pumpkin sappers uh, everywhere they can, and we should see them start to push as much as possible, just trying to get back. This is what we talk about on Towers of Doom. Because you get no advantage from the map objective uh, you know, in the game itself, you don't have catapults pushing lanes, you don't have uh, you know, extra advantage in the map, it doesn't matter how hard you win the early game, as long as you do not prevent any shots on your core in the late game, it doesn't matter if you're at 1 HP versus 40. You can always come back on this map at an even advantage. Great job, though, by Cognitive. Still being able yes. to pick up a fort from that, realizing how low it was, grabbing the Pumpkin Sappers, escorting them in so that they can once again put Nom on the back foot. But now, Nom have 20 right along with Cognitive, and we have Storm Talents on both sides. Yes, we do. We'll have to see here how the rest of these fights are going. I mean, Nom is showing life here. Nice placement of the Aberth Mine to know when people are using the tunnel. That's one of the unique features about this map. It is really, really fun. And uh, the bottom shrine or fort is going to be taken back by Faye, doing the best she can. But Jaina, so slow at sieging. And nice invade here from Cognitive to take the aggressive siege camp. Nom's just about to scout it out, but you're a little bit too late, bros. Zoya, no bolt of the storm on Jaina. That is winter mute. Winter mute. That is so greedy from <laughs> Faye. That is very interesting. Uh, for those that don't know, winter mute. Whenever you cast a spell as Jaina, the water elemental casts the exact same spell: blizzard, frostbolt, and Kona cold. It does a lot of damage. Yeah, it's 50% of the damage you do with your abilities, but it still can stack up so much, especially if you're targeting someone down uh, with the Jaina and the uh, water elemental. Uh, looks like Rhaegar has finally picked it up. I Kona once again just testing the waters before he gets that. Oh, and cattle. wow! Cattle's gonna go down, does not get saved by the ancestral healing, and Nom are on the chase. They're going for it. Deadly Ice is going deep. He talked about his gray man. It's looking great here. They're going for Icona. Nice stun from Kachi. And will Coffin go down as well? There is Wraith using the disintegrate. Not gonna get a Faye being a very aggressive here. They died for her to ice block use. Zugrug has to get out of there though. Being, oh, that's actually the Aberthal clone, so he doesn't mind. And a four for nothing exchange in favor of Nom. What is happening, Gilly? I have no idea, but now they're going to get two altars, and Nom somehow are clawing their way back into this. Seven hit points left on their 
core. What is happening? You do not ever, ever underestimate your opponent in a tournament like this. We saw them getting greedy in those team fights where they're very split up. Jaina trying to solo the back line while everyone else is split out. And you just can't do that. Not at this stage. You, even though Nom is the underdog in this tournament, probably considered by most the eighth place team, you cannot disrespect them. You cannot underestimate them or this will happen. Nom with an experience lead, Gilly. Man, uh, they've got Temporal Flux too, so they have that, they have that huge 60% slow on Disintegrate, and they picked up Hunter Swiftness. Uh, it provides extra movement speed whenever you have that Shadow Star. So you think about the fact that once they hit that, Deadly Ice can just go as Greymane and catch anybody out, and that's exactly what happened. Well, they're still on the ropes, though. They're still in an awkward spot here. It's 7 to 16 HP on course, so Nam is not out of this quite yet, but they ha they are, you know, they're still in a fighting point with a full level lead over Cognitive. Those stats do matter. Doing some damage here to Cattle. Well, the minions actually get in range. It does not look out of it. Kachi, whoa, bro, you're getting very excited. He keeps himself alive, though. The Hardened Shield helping out a lot there. And wow, Kachi somehow survives. Coffin taking a lot of damage as well as Glaurong here. And Wow, okay, no one died. Did they get those pumpkin sappers in? It no, was so hard to clear. tell. It was a good blizzard yeah. to be able to stop that and a good stall out from Cognitive. That's exactly what they needed to do. Uh, they are going to take out that ultimate evolution. It will be back pretty soon, but it won't be back in time for this altar spawn, and every altar counts at this point for Team Nom. But they are slowly closing that gap where once it was 30-something to, like, 9, now it's only 16 to 7. That's so much closer. I know that math, Zoya. I know oh, you that You got one. that one, <laughs> uh, What Do you want to briefly talk about the Abathur level 20 talent. I'm not too big of a fan of Locust Brood on this map. You really don't get too much of an advantage from sieging, and minus the fact that you're taking the forts, right? I think maybe even Hive Mind, Hive Mind. or the uh, Ultimate Evolution upgrade with the shield would yeah. have been a much better for this map specifically. It's a big shield. Yes, it is. Now, they are going to end up losing this shrine, but it's not enough damage for Nom to lose the game. They are going to be at, I believe, 3 HP. And yes, that is what's left on the core. So one more altar taken, and that is game for Nam. Everything on the line for Nam right here. It's an elimination match and they cannot lose any more altars here. And now Cognitive have finally been able to catch a breath after uh, what was scary for them for a little while in that uh, that level 20 area. They lost uh, an alt or a, a bell tower finally to Nam as they were able to uh, capitalize on some of the overextensions from Cognitive. But now they're back on even footing. Wow, that poke. Yeah. Glaurong instantly half health from just one uh, arcane missiles cast from Li Ming. Yeah, I mean, when you've got Seeker, if you can make all of those hit and Mirror Ball on top of that too, uh, that's, that's a lot of damage that can come out from both of those, especially with Glass Cannon. Yes, that is a lot of damage here. Looks like a Nom on the verge of going uh, aggressive here. They're trying to force a fight, trying to catch someone out of position, but this is a hard composition to get a gank on, but you have to keep in mind Wintermute, yeah, still no, bolt, no bolt, of the bolt of the storm on Faith. They can catch her out of position. They're going to get punished, and they're going to get punished hard. Did Glau go bolt? He did. Okay, so Thrall at least went in bolt of the storm. Sometimes you see greedy Thralls go for a Nexus Frenzy, I believe. Have you seen if that is Tor Bus or Death uh, Metal? I can check. Okay, we're going to see if that's Tor Bus. Tor Bus. Okay, it is Tor, tour Bus. Okay, so we're going to be looking to see if he's able to uh, move back into position, but there's a, there's a good chance that it gets stunned out. You know, they've got Mernin, they've got Taronda, importantly, too. Um, no Lunar Blaze, though. It is Battle Momentum there, so it doesn't have the range up upgrade, so it is possible that they might be able to, uh, to catch her in that mosh pit. Oh, this is going to be such a hard oh, contention man. here for Nom. Triple Alter spawning. They cannot let Cognitive catch a single one. They do have an advantage with Abathur. His body can go catch one, but they're going ham right out the gate. And Faye, not with the rest of her team. If she can just sneak down and catch that Alter, that might be what it takes. They're going straight for that top left Alter. Abathur uh, clone is running out of time. Kachi very aggressive with his positioning. You see Faye rotating down on the backside to potentially go for that middle Alter. But oh my god, Nom's position. They have someone in every spot. They have Deadly Ice down there. Kettle does end up missing the power slide, but Faye and Rhaegar are coming in. Mosh Pit has been used, and I believe that's going to be a very dead Greymane here. But the top left altar was captured by... Actually, Greymane didn't die. He didn't die, and Abathur is on the other altar. Are they going to be able to stop this right now? Abathur picks it up. They're trying desperately to get Cognitive out of here now. Uh, Sundering 
goes out. Nobody down on either side. Hunter's if Mark not goes wins down. This, they win, if they get this ultra, they win the game. Oh if they God. can somehow cap this, Wraith is trying to duel out uh, Faye here, and they're collapsing on top of Faye. No bolt of the storm. Is this going to be the death of Faye? Out of their hats, trying to poke her down. Can they land the storm bolt? Nice. Ice block dodge, though. And Wraith almost catches the altar. Dayun goes down. But Faye falls. EDC falls. That's going to be the death of Taronda as well. Nom trying their hardest. Wraith's going to fall. Kachi looking for the re engage here. Deadly Ice, they need to cap this. Whoever gets this altar wins this game. They need to try and contest this still. Okay, it's three versus two here. Um, three versus three, actually, because they do have Deadly the Avatar. Ice is going for the, the cap. Zugrug, look, they have the ultimate evolution. Glaurung is going to come in here. Deadly Ice does dodge the Feral Spirit, but the chase is on. They're trying to get him down. That's going to be the death of Deadly Ice. Kachi going to stall us out as long as again. Zugrug getting no value out of his ultimate evolution. They're trying to kite back as well as they can. Harden Shield has been used. That's the death of ultimate evolution. With Koth and Luck over here to cap it. The mines are down. He gets the storm on them. But Kachi falls, and that is going to be game number one going over to Kachi. Cognitive. That was game at number one. Okay, so the, the, the fall, we're going to see the fall there. All Zugrug's right. going to go ahead and kill himself. They're trying to kite back as well as they can, but Glaron going for the cap. Zugrug's going to try and get one more slap off the stall. Off. They do stall it one more time, but <laughs> Taronda not up for eight seconds. GG Cognitive Gaming takes game number one, but Nom, wow, what a performance. Zoya, I really think that they underestimated Nom there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You don't go winter mute. You, you don't. That was way too Especially close versus for this aggression. You have you have Lee Ming, you have Murden, you have Taronda, and you have Greyman. You don't you don't not go bolt. Yeah, that was way too close for comfort there. You were right. <laughs> they picked up the two and nearly cut the last one. Oh my god. That was gosh. so close. Do not ever, <laughs> ever underestimate your opponents, guys. <sighs> Wow, let's take a look at the hero damage here. Abathur on top, or excuse me, Deadly uh, Ice on top with mm -hmm. Greymane with 70,000 damage. Abathur right behind him with 69,000 damage, showing the power of those two heroes together. Uh, and the clones of uh, Zugrug, I, I doubted it in the draft. You brought up that they could be cloning Greymane. I thought it was going to be Li Ming, but with those, uh, you know, um, Greymane clones, yeah. impressive amount of damage. Yeah, you just have so much in front, too. Like, you're trying to deal with so like those two <laughs> up there. He can feel free to go into uh. Morgan form, right? And then he he gets uh, an extra 20% dam attack damage. And then, so like you add to that with the Worgen too, which gets 40% already. Let's see, right in front. And then Li Ming in the back with so much melee. There's nothing that Li Ming is going to do. <sighs> cognitive, <laughs> cognitive, cognitive. <laughs> Let's 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 try hard this next game. All right, let's not make it that close. Nom, uh, you know, a lot of teams doubting if they should have been here at the North American regionals. And, and you know, to be fair, they're definitely the newer blood here, they're the least experienced roster at this event. But they deserve to be here. They earned their spot here. No matter what anyone says, Nom earned the right to be here. Indeed. And uh, you know, it's really just well done from yeah. those guys. It was an amazing job by them. We'll see how they can fare, though, on a battleground that is chosen from Cognitive. You know, that was Nam's choice, and it almost paid off for them. They almost were able to do it, but now it is going to be Cognitive's spot. Um, they've been picking a lot of Infernal Shrines in the qualifiers, but it's going to be Dragonshire that they bring yes. Nam to. And uh, Cognitive versus Team Blaze had a very shaky game on Dragonshire, um, so we'll have to see if they can play this just a little bit better. Um, it is Cognitive's map choice, so um, they are comfortable on this map. You know, I know Glaurung loves this map because of the progression and the rotation you can get. We'll see if we're going to have Nam on uh, Grey Main again, or if p potentially we could have Glaurung on it this time. But I think either way, it'll be a hotly contested pick. You know, uh, if it nearly worked for Nam, they did such a fantastic job with him. And he, like I mentioned before, Deadly Ice has really been making a name for himself in the qualifiers with that. Yes. He, you know, he joined the team only a few days before the first qualifier. Really? Yeah, so they're really a, a very new roster. He fits in well. He really, they really complement his play well. So, you know, uh, give this team, you know, a month or two, and, you know, they'll be back here beating Cognitive for sure. But uh, they still have one more game to go at least. We'll have to see how it goes for them. I'm excited for that. Now, Dragonshire is where we'll be. So we're going to be looking at uh, the rotations between mid bot especially and wanting to make sure you have a good solo lane hero as we get into this. Team Nam with the first pick, first ban. They banned Z uh, Zeratul versus Cognitive before. They did not want to deal with Glaurung Zeratul, that Vorpal Blade madness that he brings into a game. Will they choose to ban that here again? We'll take a look at this. Um, 
you know, uh, I have a few ideas of how Cognitive is going to draft. I was talking to them backstage. You know, they, they have ways. They want to change up how they were playing. You know, they want to adapt the tournament because when you get into those scrim mindsets, right, you know, sometimes teams let teams get what they want just to try things out and stuff. And in tournaments, you know, the draft changes. So you have to adjust to that. You have to adjust to how other people play in tournament because uh, you can't take uh, scrims as gospel. There's Dayun. Uh, funny story about Dayun that the team shared with me is that uh, one time they were doing a draft and Zugrug said to draft somebody, and Dayun didn't think that that was the best choice, so he brought out uh, Artanis and Tassadar, trolling his team just a little bit. They said that from that point on, he only gets observer links when they are doing a drafting. It's the best. If you're picking Artanis, <laughs> you're either Team Blaze or you're not picking heroes ever. <laughs> yeah, he likes to troll his team a little bit. They have a lot of fun. They are hilarious to listen to in comms, by the way. Yeah, they've been fun to hang out with this yeah. weekend as well. I mean, they're all very, very humble. You know, they realize that they're the newer team here, so they're trying to keep their distance, but we've been very welcoming, you know, forcing them to hang out with us by the fire pit <laughs> and stuff. And they're getting along pretty well. You know, like, they, like we said, they're the newer blood. They're, you know... Um, the up-and-coming team at this event, but uh, I like those guys a lot. They are cool. They've been fun. We've got a Falstad ban from Team Nam thus far, so changing it up a bit from last time, but, you know, Falstad on Dragonshire can be so integral in helping uh, pick up those shrines because you can fly back and forth between them. The global presence is really nice to have. Greyman, though, <laughs> going to be the ban, respecting. Yeah. Respecting Deadly Ice there. Deadly Ice, you're not getting any fun. So, oh, I like it from Nam. They're going to go ahead and first pick the Zeratul, denying Glaurong, uh, Greymane, and Zeratul here. Cognitive going to respond with a first pick of Zagara, or, uh, you know, after the Zeratul. And who will be their next pick? You got Jaina up. Um, you could go both Zag and Thrall in this position and deny both of the best laners on Dragonshire from Team Nam. Very true, and they wouldn't have to deal with that Zagara Thrall matchup. But it will be Rhaegar. Yeah, uh, Hayakona has Different really orc. been wanting to have. Yeah, still kind of the same, right? I mean, yeah. still, yeah. They're both green. All right, so it will be Rhaegar and Zagara as we move into the next pickups for Team Nam. Uh, since they are in that first pick position, they need to make sure that they have uh, a really good, strong three picks as it's four more heroes before they'll get a chance to uh, finish out their composition. Um, Thrall is available, but they do already have that zero tool. It looks like Tassadar will be at least the pick up here, and I like that denial the of Protoss vision. Bros, the yeah. Tosses themselves. Artanis? No. Did I hear Artanis? No. Hello? Li Ming going to be picked hold. up here. I mean, Wraith's uh, um, Li Ming was very, very solid last game. Great positioning, good burst, really good combos down, so I like the pickup from them. Mid-tier bands coming up from Cognitive. Let's see what they're going to choose to take out from Team Nam. Thinking about last game, you know, the Grey main was a great one there. Um, Li Ming was a problem for them. They already have a support, so maybe they're going to try to further limit the support pool that Nam can pull from. Yeah. Not thinking that they will want to do this solo Tassadar support. We haven't seen that uh, really too much here in NA. It's much more of an EU-specific yes. choice to make. Yeah, we very rarely see it outside of their region. It does happen, though. ETC going to be the band as well. Jaina from Team Nam. What damage will Cognitive lock in here? There's still a decent amount on the table. Uh, for the later half of this day, we haven't been seeing too much Lunara. Someone who seems to be neglected quite a bit. Makes me sad. Makes me sad too. I love Numara. She's very fun. Uh, potentially mm -hmm. not the best on this map though. It's uh, she's very good on maps where you have an objective you need to siege. Yes. And there's no bosses on this map. There's no siege objective. Uh, you know, so we very rarely see her on this map. She's you know more of an infernal shrines type of girl. Now cognitive. With taking out ETC, they are looking at a different type of warrior. I think we might see them pick that up here, though, since we don't have the warrior yet for Nam. And by doing that, they're really just uh, trying to keep the pool low that Nam have to pick from. Make it so that they might be picking something they're not as comfortable or confident on and shake them a little bit. Um, so in that regard, Chugal. This is probably out of, like, you know, we heard Blaze, Rafflecopter, you know, talking about Chogal earlier in the interview. He said that Chogal can work on every map. Um, I don't know how many people agree with that. <laughs> I personally don't. I think this is probably Chogal's worst map. You have to uh, contest three different points, and having a body for each point is so very important. You have the top shrine, the middle where you cap the Dragonite, and the bottom shrine. And limiting yourself to four bodies on this map is a struggle. Cognitive, trying something different here, and... Yeah, but look at the siege. The siege, Zoya. Nope. Zagara, Gull, Rip Towers, Rip Wells. Rip Towers, but uh, <laughs> all it takes is one Dragonite, and if you can't cap a Dragonite at late game, your core is going to die. 
All right, well, the Chogall forces Team Nam to look at this draft differently, and Leoric will be the choice here. Will Ooh. we see the Karazim? Please don't go full Bob Ross on this one. <laughs> uh, they talked about it on stage, how they didn't. They weren't, they, they, they kind of panic picked with those picks, and they go ahead and do it. Uh, Fan was talking about in his winner's interview after that set versus Tempo Storm that game two, they were caught off guard by the Chogall. They locked into Leoric Karazim as kind of a panic pick, and they, did, they felt like, yes, they didn't play it right, but they also kind of uh, Garfunkled the draft. So it'll be interesting to see. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of that before. I tilted that? Gilly instantly. <laughs> Okay, well, Kong, with their last pick here, will they have another it's late warrior? People, all right. <laughs> We've had a lot of great games today. Will that be another warrior? It's going to be Murden with the choke off. All right. Zagar right behind, and then Rhaegar to keep him nice and healthy, throwing out that shield uh, for maximum damage, too, especially once they can get Rising Storm at 16 for the choke off. I like the Murden pickup personally. Mm -hmm. I think it's smart uh, from Kog. I'm curious, it should be Glaurong on show. I'm assuming Coffin, or excuse me, Fae on Gaul. So I'm assuming Cattle would stay. Normally, Cattle is their show, but yeah. with Murden here, I mean, Glau can play both Murden and show. I'm just curious as to who's going to be on. I think ideally it would be Cattle on Murden, um, show play. Actually, actually, I, Chuck think right it's, now. I think it's Catluck who plays yeah. their show Gaul. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not this time, though. Oh, okay. It's, uh, it's going to be Glau Luck. Glau Luck, okay. And then the Zagara will be played by Faye. Yes. I like Cat Luck better, though. Cat Luck is fun, but we're going <laughs> to have a bit of Glaw Luck today. All right, well, luck at least in some regard. Now, Doesn't matter how lucky you are, though, Gilly. If you don't take both of the storm, you're going to have a rough time. So let's hopeful, hopeful that <laughs> Cognitive learned their lesson from game one, not to take troll talents. Maybe we're going to have Fury of the Storm this time on Zagara. No, I've tilted, uh, I've tilted Zoya now. Here are our <laughs> rosters. We'll be getting into the game soon. As we see, Glaurung will be on that show. Uh, very aggressive. You can play aggressive as long as you have the hurry up Oaf and the Surging Fist to get away. May even see him spec into that Surging Fist build as it, uh, you can reduce the wind up time for it. Make sure that you can get more range on it too so that you can be more aggressive but still be able to get away from it. Well, show them your love, guys, because tournament life is on the line here. Team Nom, match point for them. If they lose this game, they are out of the North American regionals here on the left-hand side of the map and the blue truck's up 1-0. It's going to be Cognitive Gaming. Faye playing Zagara, Iacona on Rhaegar, Caterpillar on the Muradin, and Cognitive going to have both Glaurong on show and Koth and Luck on the Gaul. And in red, we have Team Nom with Wrath once again playing Leeming, Deadly Ice on Zeratul, Dayun playing Tassadar, Zugrug playing Karazim, and finally Kachi will be playing Leoric. Well, let's take a look here at how this game is going to be played out. Now it should be Zagara versus Tass in top lane, I would assume. But we'll see if that's actually what they're going to do. We're going to see contention here in the middle. Team Nam, they're going to see how well they utilize this Zeratul. It's going to be deadly ice on him. You know, he's had some pretty fantastic play so far in this tournament. Yeah, a lot of teams like to push in. Um, you can see where Zagara was moving up. Uh, the bush that's right above the Dragonite is one of the greatest places to put a creep tumor because it, once it spreads out, you can see if a rotation is coming in either of those ways. So already uh, just buying some time for her to move around as much as possible, throw down those creep tumors, uh, and then we'll see the rotation rotation into the bottom once they clear out that mid wave. So Deadly Ice is going to be rotating top to soak this lane versus Faye. Going to go ahead and uh, clear out a little bit of creep as well. In the bottom, it's going to be Leoric and Karazim going up against the uh, Cho Gaul here. Already showing the aggression. I mean, uh, it does say cognitive, but that is Glaurong. He's known for his aggression, and he is the one controlling the body of Cho Gaul. So we're going to be seeing how much he uh, is willing to go in and go for these uh, insane body mocks. Rotations from Nam are interesting here. Most often we see it from the mid into the bottom, but if they don't feel like they can contend with uh, the rotation similarly from Cognitive, they might try to do something different with the, the mid top. Try to keep Zagara pushed back because Cognitive has a lot of really good siege between Chogal and Zagara. If they let both of them just get some open push and open siege onto the towers, they're going to have a really hard time trying to get to these shrines. Yeah, we'll have to see how this uh, is going to uh, play out for them. I mean, it's going to be a tough, they have to win top. If they don't win top, it's going to be a struggle for them, but both shrines currently be controlled by Nam. Uh, Kachi du duking it out with Cho Gaul here. Cattle trying to force Zugrug and Wraith off, but this is just Murden and <laughs> Rhaegar in the bottom lane. How are they going to win this shrine here? And, you know, Tassar's doing a great job top. If Zeratul and Leor can secure the shrine middle, I mean, it doesn't matter if you control the shrines, as long as you don't let them get the Dragonite. So as long as their defense in the middle is perfect, which they do have at the uh, Cho Gaul there, as well as the uh, as Icona has rotated up, they won't be able to lose it, but uh, they have to be very careful. 
every time Deadly Ice goes out of lane, everyone has to play a little more cautiously, and especially Faye up here uh, by herself. Um, Tassar has been doing a good job of clearing out those creep tumors. It gets really annoying for yes. a Zagar player when you're constantly just having your creep tumors removed by a random oracle, Dayun. by those psionic storms. And yeah, Dayun's been doing a great job, and Damn, that makes. Dayun. Dayun. <laughs> yeah, that makes uh, Faye have to play back more because she never knows if anyone's coming up, and especially that Zeratul when he leaves the lane. Well, it looks like Caterpillar pro finally going to be able to get himself a shrine just for a moment. We'll see how long they can hold it. Level 4 picked up here for both teams. And Killy, do you see anything out of the ordinary? Uh, no, we're going to have bombs away from Gaul as well as rollback. So really focusing on that rune bomb, being able to throw it out even further. Uh, the siege will be there, the damage will be there too from it, uh, and making it, having it come back oh. uh, can be trouble. There goes the surging fist. Will they be able to get Wrath? Uses the teleport, and everyone will stay safe for now. Still no first blood in this game. The top lane, Tassarar and Zagar duking it out on the point, and Dayun almost loses that fight, barely gets out of there with his life. So now suddenly out of nowhere, both shrines being controlled by Cognitive. They're trying to get themselves this Dragonite, but with Kachi here, I don't know how successful they're going to be with this. Still no contention. Uh, Zeratul's on the top shrine right now, trying to force him off of it. Icona's going for the cap, but doesn't matter with Zeratul still in that top point. Good job, and great rotations coming out from Nam. Both teams neck and neck in experience but Cognitive trying to get their level 7s just a little bit sooner with this rotation. Now they have importantly taken out the towers in mid, so they've got uh, minions that will be starting to push in toward that mid four, and that means if they can really get a good siege there, then if they can pick up both of the towers, it might take Nam just a little bit too uh, much time to get to the Dragon Knight, and Cog might be able to pick it up. Well, a lot of damage going down onto Cho'Gall here, but they're going to back out there. Wrath getting very, very low. Cattle looking for the kill there. Both shrines controlled by Nam, but they're not going to be able to get it. Zagara is top capping that top lane. Dayun going to go ahead and rotate back up to make sure he keeps soaking that lane. Slight experience lead to Cognitive as they do hit level 7 for the first, but Nam right behind them. Oh, they're oh, going to get that in? Wow, out of nowhere. With nice the sneak. Steal. Really good job. All right, so he's going to start working on some of these towers. Uh, the nice thing is they've already got one down. Almost the second one, too. Should just be able to breathe on that, like literally this time. I know people say that a lot, but actually can just breathe on it and it go down. And we'll see where they choose to take it. They're going to bring it bottom. They've already done a good job of draining those towers of ammo. So they just need to get the minions to push up now and be able to take that out. With such an early Dragon Knight, you're really just trying to get as many uh, structures as possible, even if it's just the towers in front. You open up the fort for later pushes from mercenaries or if you are able to just a siege in and you start to get yourself ahead in experience. We're going to be seeing Farsight picked Ooh. up at Rhaegar at level 7. Cleanse not needed here, not feeling he needs the uh, extra survivability. So he's going to go for the Vision versus Zeratul, uh, allowing you to reveal the arrow area and make sure he can't get away. Um, the cool thing about it is it doesn't just reveal or it, it, just, it breaks stealth for a long time. I think it's four seconds where you can't be stealth again. So it's just really good. And every second that it, you're ticked inside of it just keeps resetting that cooldown on when you can restart. So very powerful versus a Zeratul. Zoe, I think I have something that might tilt you. No. We have Dark Descent picked up on Gaul, which is stacking. The more hero takedowns you get, the more damage Rune Bomb will get. Runic Blast will do, rather. Well, so far, zero times more damage is still zero. So Cognitive needs to secure a kill for that talent to be <laughs> any uh, you know, uh, value. And that's the problem with Cho Gaul is usually in games you see with Cho Gaul, the kill count is extraordinarily low you know, sometimes sub 10. So it'll be very interesting to see how effective that talent's gonna be. Yeah, it's sub one at this moment. Yeah. As we still haven't had first blood, we've had a Dragon Knight and no first blood at this point. But Cognitive are about to pick up heroic abilities. We'll see if it's going to be Dread's favorite upheaval or if we're gonna have a hammer of twilight for them, uh, for, Cho, or for Cho. Meanwhile, Team Nam need to try to get back up. This could be a, a, a potential point if they don't have their heroic abilities in the next shrine phase for Cognitive to get yet another easy Dragon Knight. But they're not too far behind here. Yeah, they do have that level 10 talent or heroics. They'll see what they can do with that advantage. They got about a half level until uh, Nam has level 10. They're not going to be able to get Dayhu. Nice stun coming out from Cattle, but not going to be able to secure any kills off of that. And this is what we're talking about in the draft Chogal Siege. Very impressive here. But here comes Kachi for the flank. Nice dash out from Cog uh, from Glaurong there, trying to reposition himself. Kashi does not end up landing the Drain Soul, so uh, still very, very healthy. The siege continues. Meanwhile, up top, it's bruisers versus bruisers as Nam are very close to picking up their own heroic abilities. But we have Shadow Bolt Volley devouring Ma. It will be Hammer of Twilight for Cho, Avatar, and darn it, Icona. Why? Quit messing with us. Wow, this siege. Okay, so the first fort of the game is going to go down here uh, to Cognitive. They might oh, even be able Kachi? to get Kachi now. He has to use Mar March of the Black King. This is a very Kachi uh, choice. Not a lot of Leorks pick up March oh, of the Black King anymore, but he loves it. Ancestral had to be used there, uh, forcing Iacona to finally pick that talent. 
And here comes Deadly Eyes for the flank. Will the VP be good enough? He's on top of the uh, uh, Rhaegar there. Gets the VP on the Cho. Seven side strikes goes out on the cattle. He's very low. Avatar has been popped. They do go for the combo. Will it be enough to kill him? And no, he's still so very tanky. Wrath going to be chased down now by Cogthan. Will they be able to get him? Uh, Hammer of Twilight used for the stun. And man, the Dread Orc does so much damage. Uh, a teleport will be used, but the Shadow Flame, man, has such great range. They will be able to pick up a takedown on Li Ming. Will Cattle going for the cap here? Will they be able to get it? And yes, they weren't able to get in range. Second Dragonite of the game going over to Cognitive, and uh, they finally do have that one kill. So that talent's getting some value. Not much, but, but you know <laughs> what? It, it wasn't useless this game. Good on you, Cognitive. Perfect. But they do lose those stacks upon death, so hopefully they can make sure to get out of there with all of the escape mechanisms. But it is the Surging Fist uh, build, so they are, do have that potential. Great Wraith Walk to stop and uh, stall out the kick from the Dragon Knight. Meanwhile, the siege continues this time from Cogfin up into top. They've already dealt with bottom. They're happy with taking out that fort and now moving on to try to do it again. Well, level 13 almost here for Cog. About a level and a half lead over Nom right now. Doing a great job so far in this game. Good rotations coming out. Dragon Knight getting pretty low here. About a uh, 40% left on its HP, but this fort will end up going down. But Cattle's in a really awkward spot. It does not look like the fort will actually fall. Uh, he does get one more breath on him, but Nice Shield's coming out from Dayun. He's trying to get over the wall. He does get the Dwarf tossed over. He's assisted by Iacona. Can they get out here? Seven side strikes goes down. Cattle taking a lot of damage. We do see that uh, Wraith is in the chase here. Nice stun going down the Leoric. Cattle in a scary spot. And there's that Ancestral Healing. Avatar has been popped with a flank from... Uh, the uh, Cho'Gal's coming in. All right, so Cho'Gal moving in, trying to stop Wrath. A great Shadow Boat volley, and Dayun almost melts down to that Zugrug, trying desperately to get uh, to catch Cogsman, but he does have Molten Block and used it, and Karazim will get taken out. But the chase continues with the Surging Fist once again into the Hammer of Twilight and Wrath in a oh, bad Wrath. spot. Oh, the yeah. Banelings are going to make sure that Li Ming does not survive that. Unfortunate death there for Wrath. That's a, a two for nothing exchange in favor of Cognitive. Team Nom still not having those level 13 talents. It's about to be 14 versus 12 and Cognitive sieging the front wall of this bottom keep, opening this up for when they get that next Dragonite. Big push coming in here, Healing Ward going to drop, or Healing Totem even, from Rager to try to heal them up so that they can continue to put damage down onto this keep, but they do need to be careful. Nom already are back up, and yeah, it was still a big win for yes. Connie to be able to throw that damage down. They're also going to be able to get that mid fort very easily there. Don't think those uh, bombs will end up making it over, but it is a last hit as well. Dragon uh, Shrine should be spawning very, very soon here, and we'll see what Cognitive plans to do to try and cap this. Here we go with the rune bomb and with that, they take it out. It's still alive. One day. Oh, somebody breathe on it. Cattle wants it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this fort the will not day. fall. The this sad fort day. will live forever. <laughs> Faye wants it, but no. There oh, we go. The saddest death of this entire tournament so far. <laughs> Very disappointed. Infested drop makes sure the fort finally goes down. Cognitive with that level 15 to almost 13. Nom will have 13 in time for the shrine phase. Uh, you can try to get into another fight. They have to start winning the team fights, though, because they keep just losing this Dragon Knight to Cognitive over and over again. Well, two level leads still for Cognitive as they're getting very close to that level 16 town. That's going to be a huge advantage. Dragon is spawning. Faye is capping that bottom shrine. Cho'Gal is capping the top one. Can they get a DK here? Ico taking a lot of damage. Seven side strikes goes down, but the Ancestral does end up connecting. Nice body box coming out from Deadly Ice, but he's just barely going to get out of there. Both shrines currently controlled by Cog. Caterpillar trying to zone out for his team, but Leoric does end up getting that top shrine. Crushing up is going to be a really big victory. Getting to that versus uh, the the Cho'Gal, as that's going to do extra damage if they can get the full Drain Hook uh, off onto him. Also, we once again have Glass Cannon, so no fear from Wrath wanting to throw down the damage, realizing that it gives you 15% less uh, health. Yeah, it's going to... need it versus a Cho, for sure. You have that health pull is just insane. You need as much burst as you can to try and kill him. But both Shrines here currently controlled. There's no one in the mid to cap it just yet. Deadly Ice is rotating up just to stall it out in case it happens. Zagara moving up as well. See if uh, Cognitive can secure this Dragon Knight. It's about to be a three-level lead as Cognitive so close to level 16. Farsight has been used. It does end up revealing deadly eyes. Our Icona potentially trying to go for the cap here. I don't know if he's the best target to put inside that since he is the support. They really need to get Cattle or uh, Faye inside of that. Sun's going down the Leoric, and wow, doesn't matter. No race walk for you, Kachi. You go down very, very quickly here. Caterpillar trying to get in the Dragon Knight, and with that bottom uh, keep exposed, this could be a game-winning push. It's only 12 minutes in the game, but having a significant three-level lead 
with Void Prison being down yes. now, this could be game. Yeah, the big deal is having Void Prison down. March of the Black King was also used there to not too much effect as uh, he wasn't get, get, didn't get the self-healing he wanted out of that. Did go down. Now, Leoric will be back up thanks to his uh, ability to cheat death a bit. And Kachi's going to come right back into the action. Going to have to Wraith walk away from the team members. But Cattle starting to try to take down that bottom keep. Will they try to move on with a Disintegrate? Trying to just burn down the Dragon Knight as much as they can. The Punk goes in. But this is tough for Nom. Still no 16. And they are a long ways off from being able to get that. Cognitive respecting their opponents. I feel like they could go core and suicide into it. And potentially just get as much damage on the core as possible if they do wipe. All three forts still stand for Cog. So even if they do just lose that five versus five for nothing, you know, what is Nom going to do with that time? They're still down talent tiers, but they're going for the safe option. That would be a play that could work and turn out advantageously, but they're not disrespecting Nom this game. They're respecting their opponents as much as they can. They're not willing to throw anything with, you know, cheeky play. Yeah, they know that they have every advantage in this game and all they have to do is continue this in. It's going to already be so difficult for Nom to get back out and try to uh, deny any more Dragon Knights because of the fact that that bottom lane will, will constantly be pushing against them with the catapults. And even if they get out and they try to deny at the Dragon Knight for a long period of time, then that's a point where the catapults will be pushing in, the lane will be great, and Cog wins a fight from there and pushes straight into the core. Still a three level lead here for Cognitive. Team Nom about to hit 15, still a full level to go. Until they get those 16 tier talents, Cognitive about to hit 18. Which is still such a huge advantage and they're not wasting any time with it. They're making sure they're getting as many structures as possible. They're clearing out this top four cattle so that the solo push with those bruisers getting it very, very low. And they're just positioned so well on the map. Also take a look at the Zagara creep spread out here from Faye. I mean, there is creep everywhere. It's not, you know, very, uh, you know, it's not covering the map, but there's creep creep in positions where no matter where Nom goes, a creep tumor will probably end up scouting them out. Yeah, very strategic locations of those creep tumors, making sure that they can just keep tabs wherever possible. Cockton coming in, Deadly Ice in trouble, gets hit by the Hammer of Twilight, is going to blink away. Now Dane taking a bunch of damage too, it will be able to uh, dimensional shift away from that, and Cockton is just gonna make sure that his team is fine to pick up these giants, steal them away, and once again put that pressure back onto the bottom lane of Team Nom. Level 19, almost here for Cognitive. As Team Nom's about to get to 16, this has got to be such a depressing feeling for Nom. Even if they got a full team wipe on Cognitive right now, they would still be behind about two levels. It's just such a tough struggle for them in this game. Their, their top you know, mid keeps being sieged down. Dragonite's just about to spawn. And it feels like, oh, there's all, almost nothing Nom can do right now to force a fight onto Cognitive. They do finally have 16. Let's see if they can make something happen with it. Yeah, constant siege that comes out from Gaul without having the mana pool is so hard to deal with, and especially when you aren't willing to go into that full engage, but now they are back on even talent tiers. And with the keep down, this is a time that Nom needs to be fighting. Cognitive has already rotated around and is looking to just instantly pick up the Dragonite. I don't know if they're going to get there in time, but they do have Karzim trying to move in. Needs to be careful because Cho'Gal will be coming back into here. Might get caught out by Cognitive. Cal has to be careful though. Seven side strikes is a lot of damage. They're starting to fall back. The rest of the team is rotating in. Faye coming up from below. Deadly Ice doing a lot of damage to Faye. She's in trouble here. Has to reposition herself, but Deadly Ice does end up wormholing out. It still not hasn't been capped. But Icona trying to keep Faye topped off. They're looking for the fight. And now uh, Cho Gall also very low as well. Half HP down already just from Kachi alone, showing the power. And they are going to ask for a pause. All right, the pause is going to come in. Make sure that these players are uh, all able to operate at peak efficiency. It's such a, a, an important match for them. Uh, Cognitive almost able to pick up a 2-0 here and be able to uh, move back into the group, be able to get a rematch potentially versus Blaze or go up against Cloud9 if Blaze are able to take them out. But uh, Team Nam, they also realize that this is they're down is and it. out. This is it. If they lose this game, they're out of this tournament. That's on all of their, these guys' minds. Even Cognitive, if they lose this game, then they're still on the lifeline for this tournament. That game, number one, I know it was way too close that Cogn Cognitive is not happy right now. They're probably still Still upset from that game number one. Yeah, the tilt can be real there, and especially you know they've. It's been uh, there's been a lot of games, a lot of series that have gone to such great three yes. game matches too, which has been fantastic to just see uh, the closeness between all of these teams. Uh, so. Uh, you know, it's, it's been a long time uh, for them to be uh, here and playing, and they just want to make sure that they're, they're right on and still being able to uh, power through and pick up this victory. We do see that the players are getting ready. The countdown has begun. We'll be getting back into the game very, very shortly. Cognitive in such a powerful position this game. The okay, countdown's Mila. going. 
And here we go. All right, getting back into the game. We do have that keep down on bottom still for Team Nom. It's going to be tough for them already. We see the minions pushing in, but they have to also de deny this. And this is a point where they need the fight because soon they're going to be up against Storm Tier Talents. And that Shadow Fury, the piercing Shadow Bolts, is nothing that it is. It's something nobody wants to deal with. Absolutely. It's got to be terrible. It's very terrifying. That Heroic is insane at level 20. Let's see here uh, what Nom needs to do. They need to make something happen right now, like you said, Billy. They need to get a pick and potentially just stall out Dragon Knight. Even if they just can lose members for a Dragon Knight, as long as they don't lose too many, they can just deny the Dragon Knight from Cognitive because that is what's going to be the game-deciding factor here. Yeah, and that's why we see Cognitive. Uh, they're just waiting this out. They're trying to get the, the minions wherever possible. They're sending out that Rune Bomb and with that huge range from bombs away, being able to pick that up, and they're almost there. Oh, They've almost the got 20. Bay in the bottom lane here, taking a lot of damage. He does end up bolting out there, but Zebra coming in from the side. Well, the seven seconds actually go down. Mog does catch uh, Zeratul here, and this is really bad for him. Can face it. Secure that kill. Bailey's come out. Nice job with the force wall. That'll help keep him alive there. No deaths on the end of my team. Extra bit in the mid lane. Leoric does go down to the Shadow Ball volley. They're chasing Wrath. They're going for a big kill here. They do end up getting that stun. Oh, but oh. nice teleport there from Wraith. And great heals coming out from the team. He, Wrath does not end up going down. They're trying to turn this around on Caterpillar. He doesn't have to work toss up just yet. And they barely came up, but he still took a lot of damage from that seven side strikes. Healing totem gets placed, but now they're kind of getting wrapped around by the members. There's team members oh, everywhere. Ryan Kona Kona going down the deadly ice. Will he go down? And a nice kill from Nog. 20 tier is here for Cognitive, though. Caterpillar trying, also getting chased oh out by God. Zabra. Kachi is almost back up. He's going to be able to come in instantly. The force and wall. Is, yeah. Oh, the force Damn, wall so Dayun. good. And that's going to be the death of Muradin now. Two down on the side of Cognitive. Oh, Zugrug. They have level 20, but they are gonna, I don't know what so they're going to be able to do. They do end up getting Zugrug, so a two-for-one exchange here. Will Kachi go down again? He's trying to repeat position himself. Nice shields coming up from Tassar. Good force wall as well, going to keep Kachi alive. Uh, Cognitive being very aggressive with their Cho'Gal right now, though, having to reposition themselves. Kachi has to be so careful, playing with death right now. Now, Zagara starting to head back up to the top lane. They know they already have that bottom shrine. And uh, realizing it, Team Nom are going to head down to the bottom. The laying is the game here. And it's huge that they were able to get those two yes. takedowns that they did. But they're not out of it yet. Uh, Storm Talents are up. It oh. looks like Coach Chogol is trying to maybe take down. But he could be in a lot of trouble. Oh and Shadow God, Bolt Volley gets bolt. completely missed. Well, that blink was so beautiful so from good. Rath, Just to reposition the, against the Shadow Bolt Volley. Really, really well done. They do not end up getting Shogol. If they did that, that would have been a huge win for Nom. But not able to do it just yet and now almost every member of each team is back alive three seconds on Murden, and we're gonna have that five versus five still great jobs from Nam stalling this game out they're a level and a half until 20 if they can stall it again and get 20 tier they control both points they just need to get themselves a dragon I think just cap a dragonite they don't even have to do anything with it just deny a dragonite from cognitive until you get level 20 and they're going for it. Zugrug's going for the cap, and they're going to get it. They're going to get them Dragonite, Gilly. Wow, they've picked it up now. And the, the great the zoning from Cho'Gal, too. Just used Disintegrate on him. It forced out the multi block on top of that. So now that's going to be down. And they're going to try to make a, as much happen with this Dragonite as possible. They have to be Dragonite. careful. Yeah, they have to be careful, though. They don't have 20. Yeah, they don't have 20 just yet, still got a full level to go, so they have to siege very carefully. Kachi being very aggressive. Deadly Ass going for Faye. Will he go over the wall for it? He does. And does he get the kill on the Faye? No, he doesn't, but Leoric does go down. Deadly Ass trying to fall off here. The oh, wow, wow, that VP was perfectly timed. Cattle still going for the kill. They're going for the chase. They're trying to get Deadly Ice, but they won't get it. But at the same time, the core for uh, Nom is being pushed by Giants and Catapults. Kachi did a good job of slowing down. He know he's uh, dead, but still can use oh, that Zugrug. skeletal swing to slow. Gonna lose the Dragonite here. Can he get away? He gets the dash and not a uh, Dayun. Nice force wall as well to reposition. They're trying to kite back. Kettle looking for blood here as well as the Cho Gaul. Trying to reposition themselves. The core was cleaned up. The mid keep did take some damage from those siege giants, but not enough to kill it off. Now Kachi going back in. There is the March of the Black King being used. Good job by Cognitive to get away from that. And the Wraith Block has to be used to get Still him back not away. 20. This is so sad for Nom. They're starting to team fight very, very well versus Cognitive. And they just don't have the Storm Towns. If they had 20, this would be a completely different game. But they just can't do it. They don't have the option to soak other lanes. Kachi getting low. Wraith Block has been used. But great heals from both Karazim and Tassadar, are keeping him alive. That keep is on its last leg. And there goes yet another Dread Orb. And with uh. the Rune Bomb, five Finally, they will get another keep down. And with every keep that gets taken out, it gets harder and harder for Nam to come back into this. They already had catapults pushing against them in the bottom lane. They haven't taken any uh, permanent damage on the core yet, but it's still a problem for them where they have to, even if they win a fight, go back and deal with their own base. 
Kanchi trying to reposition himself. Wraith walking away. Still so close to level 20, Gilly. They won it so bad. Once they have that Storm Talents, we'll see how much of a difference it makes in this team fight. They will have 20 before the Dragonite, so they will be able to contest that on even footing, but they need to make sure they keep pushing out these waves. They have to keep shoving out mid and bottom of those catapults. will do serious damage to their core. All right, so we have Transgression. So now 11-sided strike coming in from Karzine. Still waiting on Leoric. It's not going to be Spectral Leech wanting to pick up that hardened shield, uh, make sure that he still can withstand a lot of the pressure that's being put on him. Temporal Flux going to be a good, uh, a big boon for, temp or for Team Nam to be able to slow people down with that disintegrate, make sure that they can throw as much damage down on possible. They have to clear out that top shrine or lane. They cannot be pushed by bruisers, but this is exactly what Cognitive wanted to do. They're positioned in the bottom, either waiting for an aggressive rotation or to go for a backdoor. Once they show themselves going top, they're waiting so patiently. Cattle repositioning himself in the flank just in case someone rotates down through middle. They're scouting out. They know they're on top. Trend. Are they going to go for a Coral in or are they just looking for a pick? It looks like they're just going for a pick here mm -hmm. as they would have shoved Coral already. They're pretty spread out as well. They're looking for Deadly Ice. They do end up seeing him here. Cattle gets dismounted. He has to Dwarf Toss away. That was a big slow that came in on a Cattle, but he did still get away. And now Kachi coming in. There is the Wraith Walk trying to maybe catch him now. As we come in, Cattle uh, is going to try to get away, but it was a good seven-sided strike to hit him. But so many pe members in that wow. seven-sided strike, and they won't be able to take anybody down now. The Shadow Bolt Volley comes in, and with the positioning there, a bunch of members taking damage now. But they didn't die. That mm -hmm. is the important thing. Tassadar Karazim has the ability to keep everyone alive. But Kachi, so far, he's trying to rotate up. I don't think he's going to get away. Nice Storm Bolt coming out from Cattle. Will he be able to survive this? He's doing a great job so far. And Kachi's not going down yet. It's, a, it's not a he, end of the world, though, if it's Leoric. Leoric, you know, he comes back sooner because he can use his abilities to cheat death. He could still be used to slow people down, allow his teammates to be able to get away. But it still is a problem because that is one body down. Oh, it might have been a little bit too slow. The rotation from Zugrug, he might have rotated a half second too slow to get this bottom shrine. If this goes to Cognit, this is going to be very bad for Nob. Yeah, uh, with the Dragonite, this will be game. All Cog needs to do is pick it up. A hammer of oh. comes in, seven-sided strike, all on to, uh, <laughs> yeah, They're I would not gonna use get the DK, they're too. gonna get denied it. Cho'Gal did not go down, but Nam denied another Dragonite. They got 14 seconds on Leoric. This is exactly what they need to be doing, Gilly. He's about to be up. Li Ming's rotating in. Nam, believe the only heroics they have that are BP and um, Seven Side Strikes. Yeah, there is still Devouring Ma and the potential for that. Uh, they need to make sure not to group up. Dayun already taking damage, so it has Zuckrug oh, in there. Wow. It's a big Shadow Bolt volley, Zoya. They do get out of it, though, and Kachi able to reposition himself. They're not securing the kills they need. They're having a real big struggle with that. Uh, Kachi still holding that mid lane. Deadly Ice is not with them as well. He was rotating mid as well for a potential delay on that shrine. And that Ooh. is going to be, again, another death on Kachi. You can, I mean, yes, Leoric can die. It's not as impactful as other heroes, but they're getting no value out of his death. They need to get something with it, and they're getting nothing. And if Faye gets this, Zugrug's trying to deny it, but they do oh. get to it in time. But does he have seven side strikes up? He does. He's trying to stall as long as he can, but he's about to go down. At the same time, Wrath ended up going down to Cho'Gall on the top. And with that, with both of those heroes going down, I think this might be game, Gilly. Now, Cho'Gall. Goal is heading up to the top shrine. Will they finally be able to get it? I love that Nam is using everything they can right here. They know a Dragon Knight is end of the game, so they've used everything. A huge slow from Earth Grasp Totem stops Deadly Ice. He tries to blink in. A Psionic Storm does stop Faye once again from picking this up. Void Prison has to go down though, and that means they won't have that in the defense uh, of their core if they do God, lose Dragon Knight. It. Wow, he denies oh. it again. I don't know if it's going to matter too much. At the same time, Catapults are pushing the core. They get the shield down. Do they get any true damage onto it? They do get 5%, and uh, that's, you know, permanent damage. It's not much, but it does matter. Caterpillar capping that bottom shrine. You got Cog, uh, uh, Cho'Gall and Icona going for the core. The Dragonite does... It. Oh, wow, that Maw barely saving it. They do get the Dragonite. They're going for core. It's at 76%, Gilly, and I think this is it. Team Nom's tournament life on the line. I think it's going to be GG. Cognitive Gaming moves on to the next round of the group stages. The Shadow Bolts make dr the Dragonite not even needed there. The core burned down so fast, and Cognitive will be be able to keep their tournament life alive. Cognitive's not happy. <laughs> no. They are not happy with how close those two games are. It's been a very long day. All of these teams are tired, but I don't think they were expecting that close of a game. It is Cho Gall. They do have longer games in it, but Nam showed life in both of those games. You know, they are definitely the underdog here, but uh, they, they did show that they deserve to be here, Gilly. They did, and they showed that Cognitive are maybe not 
maybe too confident in some places. Like they were getting caught out in a couple places, even on the battleground that they chose. And so if they're thinking like, you know, oh, this is the team who got in, in the last qualifier. It was through the lower bracket of the last qualifier at that. So potentially like the eighth seeded team, if we're, if we're almost losing games to them, how are we going to fare? We've already lost to Blaze. We were already almost out of the tournament. Yeah, we'll have to see what Cognitive uh, plans to do tomorrow. I believe we know who, we do not know who they play. They no. play the loser of uh, Cloud9 and uh, Team, Team Blaze. Blaze. Well, we see them shaking hands now as this will be the final match of the evening and soon we will get to hear from Cognitive uh, just how are they feeling. Who would you like to see get interviewed? Faye, mainly just because I want to ask her about Wintermute. Faye is a really, really weird player. She takes talents no one else takes, but uh, <laughs> I got to I gotta ask her about Wintermute. Yeah, here we go. There's the Shadow Bolt Volley on the core. It's ridiculous amounts of damage at the end, uh, especially once you get that Shadow Fury. Yeah. It's never something you want to deal with. Wow, what a fun game. I'm gonna take a look here at the hero damage. I mean, Gaul doing Gaul things. Koth and Luck doing 130,000 <laughs> hero damage. There he goes, giving me a little salute over there. He knows it, he knows it's very good, but uh, really well done there from uh, Cognitive. You know, just it, despite having Cho Gaul on Dragonshire, they made it work. Well, it's been a blast casting with you, but Anna, I hear we have an interview ready. Yes, you don't get to talk to Faye, but maybe Glaron can fill us in, at least on how the team is feeling. I know that, as the casters mentioned, you guys have been backstage really unhappy with your earlier performance. How are you feeling now? Um, honestly, this is our first LAN ever together, and there's been like little moments of greatness, like uh, cognitive, or not cog, I'm sorry, I'm so tired. <laughs> Cawthon flashing over the gust and hitting that Maw and Falstad, or like Faye with that snipe, but today, the biggest problem for us was mostly like our draft and some in-game decisions. But honestly, we're super tired. But tomorrow, it should be, it's going to be a new day. And uh, I think we'll, we'll bring what we've been showing in practice and stuff. Like we've, we're a really strong team, and I want to show you guys that pretty much. Yeah, after the game, I heard the first thing out of your mouth was, I'm so tired. I mean, considering how on your brain has to be for all of this after such a long day, I admire you. And I know our casters do as well. I know you guys also have some questions about that. What do you have? Yeah. Faye is weird. She takes weird <laughs> talents all the time. <laughs> what about Winter Mute? Was, like, hello? Was that the Towers of Doom game? Yeah, yeah. that was the Towers of Doom game. Um, the thing about Faye is mechanically she's, like, really, really good. And yeah. uh, her talent decisions really set her aside from other range characters. She do it does. Like, uh, honestly, other range carries are, like, super predictable, but randomly, if you play against Wintermute and you're not ready for it, that is it's true. complete absurd damage. Uh, single target burst is crazy and uh, stuff like that, but... I see your eyes alight as well, Gillyweed. Do you have something you want to ask? Yeah, so we heard from Team Blaze about the viability of Cho'Gall and that they say that Depending on the comps, you can play Cho'Gall on any map. Do you feel the same way after playing it on Dragonshire, which is a, thought of to be a harder one? I think Cho'Gall is like really viable, uh, especially if you get like the proper comp, Rhaegar and whatnot. Yeah. But it's also a great hero if you're really tired. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Coffin didn't do anything helpful. that game, did he? I mean, he just, what was call time today, Zoya? Like 8 a.m. or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, today was a long day. But tomorrow, I'm hoping we refine some stuff in the draft and we'll play a lot better. Well, you guys just did it on hard mode. Yeah. yeah. Well, looking at scrim results, I mean, you guys are arguably second best team, in my opinion, based off how you play in scrims. Hopefully you guys can show that in the tournament tomorrow because I know you guys got a lot of fans and I know you guys got much better play to show. Today is our first time ever playing on land together. So there's always like a learning curve. Scrims are different than tournaments, obviously. Yeah. But I really hope we can bring to the tournament what we've been showing in scrims. Well, you guys are going to move on. You're in the lower bracket, but you'll play the loser between Team Blaze and Cloud9. Who are you hoping you'll hit? I really wanted to play C9 in this tournament, but because our tournament life is on the line in the loser's bracket, I'd much rather play Blaze. We will just make adjustments in the draft, and I think Blaze has a really unique style of play, but if you draft properly and don't make a whole lot of mistakes, you can just win. Well, we'll look forward to that. Good luck. Thank you so much for your time, even though I know you're ready to go to bed. So go ahead and rejoin your team. Thank you so much. And guys, thanks. You too. Have a great night. Guys, we get one more look at this bracket. So I'm going to give you a brief recap of everything that's happened today and what we can look forward to tomorrow. 
Remember that we had Group A earlier, so long ago. Tempo Storm faced off against Panda Global and Tempo Storm did advance. We also had Noventic versus King of Blades Alpha and Noventic advance. And between those two teams, Team Noventic secured their spot in the semifinals. In the lower bracket, we saw teams try for their, did see some eliminations, but tomorrow we're going to have one more of those. And moving right on to Group B, we're going to have Team Blaze and Cloud9 face off tomorrow, and the loser of that will play Cognitive, as we mentioned. No defined spots in the semifinals for Group B yet, so you'll have to wait until tomorrow to see that. Now, we need a rest, I'm gonna be honest. Even heroes need to sleep, but you don't have to go to bed. It is far from me to tell you what your bedtime is, and lucky you, the Australia-New Zealand qualifier is still going on. So this channel is going to host that here on Twitch, and you can stay in chat and watch that at your leisure. Don't forget to use the hashtag HGC to tell us what you think of that and our tournament all day. We're very, very excited to see you tomorrow. We're going to start at 10 a.m. sharp, and we will be well-rested, bright-eyed, and bushy-tailed, and I will see you then.